I'm making my entrance into my own studio. Who are you and what are you doing in here? Oh, no, I remember now. Uh, but this is, uh, sorry, did you want the lights on? No, it's okay. Hmm? Is that better? Um, anyway, this is uh, my studio. I've been uh, meaning to film this somehow for somebody's website for years. And uh, now that Yano is here with his nice camera, I thought we'd give it a try. I've done it myself with my own camera, walking around looking at stuff, and uh, apparently, uh, of course, you don't see me in that picture. But uh, and also, I, people tell me I spend too much time looking at my duck collection instead of looking around the house. So, so now we'll do it a different way. Anyway, I guess the first place I should go. Well, maybe you want to make a quick, uh, should make a whole 360 degree. Yeah. And then we'll uh, go on. I'm not going to run around in a circle, but uh, just look all the way around, and then I'll explain some of the specific things here. This is also my TV room. So it's uh, in my general office. In my duck collection. And uh, but it, obviously this is my, my drawing table. I've had this since the, gosh, the mid-60s. I think it's a child's drawing table, actually. You can see I've worn it. It's worn down into the wood. Like it's got pits in it. And the, even this light is uh, an office light from the Kino Rosa Company. I think it's about 60, 70 years old. Um, but, yeah, this is right where I've sat, at least to draw, at least since we moved in the house here about 17 years ago. Uh, so my little French curves and uh, binoculars for when I see something interesting out in the yard. And uh, all the wrong art instruments, you know, uh, a calligraphy pen for drawing and a mechanical art pen for, so all my engineering tools. Oh, and there's my uh, Karl Barks library for quick and easy reference. Uh, dirty paper towel. Uh, let's see, I should show you. People don't believe I use all these templates when I, uh, when I draw a, a, a money bin full of coins. I use every single one of these different templates. All these different sizes down to micros. I usually am using this little one here. Because an en engineering uh, student, that's the only artwork I know. I have to do everything with engineering tools. Uh, and of course this is a light box. There it is. Um, and before I got this, uh, this is for tracing something, you know, putting uh, two pieces of paper over. Uh, before I got this, I used to just use the, uh, the eastern window in the morning and the western window in the afternoon. That was a lot cheaper. But, uh, so that's the drawing area. You know, the stuff I need is near at hand. Um, then the rest of the room has got my uh, my duck collection. Uh, different uh, cabinets have got different types of uh, ducks. Anyway, uh, why do I collect these? Uh, these are Walt Disney's Donald Duck. I don't have any interest in Walt Disney's Donald Duck. I just like Carl Barks's Donald Duck. And I, uh, long since the early 70s, I've had a full set of uh, the Walt Disney comic books, plus lots of other comic books I collect, but I've had all the comic books but they sit in file boxes, usually in my vault. You don't see them. And one day I saw, and actually it was, it was this one right here. I was at a toy store someplace, passing by, and I saw this, it looked like a bust that uh, Scrooge would have in his office. I'm not sure why he'd have Donald Duck's head, but, uh, and I bought that. And so I realized, well, that's one way to sort of have a visual embodiment of how much I loved Donald Duck, even if this is, this is all Walt Disney licensed stuff, and you're not going to see anything here based on uh, the comic books so much. But anyway, I started accumulating, and uh, when I got onto eBay about 11, 12 years ago, then I was really accumulating them. Uh, but like I say, there's plastic ones over there, and uh, that one the furthest down at the bottom in the most remote corner, that's all the Daisy Duck toys. That's the I don't, I don't see why anybody cares for Daisy Duck, but I don't ignore her, but I just shovel all her in the bottom most 
level. And ceramics and plastics, old rubber ones from the 40s and 50s. There's a whole shelf of Ludwig von Drake. This is like a time capsule here. I uh, broke the key off once years ago. Fortunately, it was full. I just uh, have to make sure I don't bump it. Otherwise, it'll like this poor guy here, he tipped over. But I don't have any way to straighten him up. So, just have to be very careful of that. Oh, there's a drawing a uh, friend, friend of mine named Jim Engel did of me in the this early 80s or late 70s. That's what I used to look like. Still had the same, had the same glasses. Had these same glasses since uh, for about 40 years. And there's watches and every possible type of, they're all figurines. It's not things with pictures of Donald Duck on it, it's uh, figurines. self-explanatory. You look in here? Yep. Those are... Uh, uh, I think we can leave the light off. Okay. Those are extra copies of uh, books of my work that the publishers send me and since I very seldom have European visitors they kind of accumulate and I'm just uh, begging people to take them like y'all know I'm gonna have to buy him a suitcase just so he can take some of these darn books <laughs> back with him so uh, it's gonna be, oh, I'm sorry. It's gonna be a fire hazard. Uh, again, you can take a quick uh, run down this little alcove. These are all the larger ceramic, like flower pots and cookie jars, and uh, and the same over on this side. Uh, th these are not all valuable. Some of them are very valuable, but that's I'm not collecting valuable Donald Duck or Duck items. I'm just collecting anything that has Donald Duck on it. Some of these are new. Some of these I don't like. You know, they're poor uh, versions of the characters. Like I say, some are. Here's a bunch of uh, toys come from uh, Italy that I think uh, parts of each toy comes each week in the weekly comic book, and you save them up and put them all together. I don't know how no much things. Uh, there's pictures of old uh, magazine ads of my old cars. There's my. If anybody doubts it, there's. There's my diploma, Civil Engineering, University of Kentucky, 1973. Here's a convention I put on. Uh, Omnicon. Louisville's annual fantasy convention. It was annual for one year. <laughs> Look at that. July 16, 18, 19, aught 76. I had DeForest Kelly. I paid him. I've hired DeForest Kelly as my employee to uh, appear at the convention. Frank Bruner, he did Howard the Duck. Some magazine covers with my uh, kisser on the... Uh... Oh, you're standing right by this. Uh, all of the books here, virtually all of them, are publications that are all Don Rosa work. There's a few that aren't, but for the most part, they're all 100% my stories. From uh, everywhere, from the United States, across Europe, all the way to Indonesia. And of course, people are saying, "Oh, you must be a multimillionaire." I, says, oh, I don't get a penny out of any of these. That's the way the system works. I'm lucky if I can get copies of them. Usually, fans like a fan in Indonesia had to send me the Don Rosa Library from uh, Java because the publishers don't let me know when they're using the stories. They don't pay me for the use of the stories, and they don't send me the copies. So uh, Egmont does, of course, but not, there's lots of other publishers around the world besides. A nice one like Egmont. Since we're talking about these, and since you've already been over this way, you should uh, go back over here and look at the comic books on the floor. And I'm running out of room for those. Those are all anthology, weekly Disney comics from around the world that have got my stories in them. But lots of other stories too, so these are obviously not 100% my work. Uh, most of the Egmont issues are just ones with my stories in them. But then some of the others uh, are such good Disney publications that I just uh, save every issue. For instance, uh, the German. These are all like uh, for collectors. Kids too, but... Uh, uh, and the Zio Pepperoni. I got a note on top of that one. I, I'm missing one issue out of that collection. I'll have to get it when I'm in Italy next in a couple of weeks. And of course the German Donald Duck Sonderheft. I've got all those. In other words, I save every issue of those because those are, I can't read them, but those are good quality Disney comics. And the Pixu, the biggest and, biggest and slickest one over there. I've got all those. 
Uh, well, it's past my, uh, we look at the awards, kind of jumbled in here. It's uh, from Norway, that's Sweden. Oh, this is an I, that's a German, that's from the Frankfurt. Yeah. Uh, the, the best uh, international cartoonist of the year award. <laughs> uh, that's not an award, that's just a clock. That's from Spain, that's from Italy, it's uh, Denmark. It's a little Italian, uh, not really an award, just uh, something from Ujianku. Uh, well, let's see, we're, we're pointing here. I should have polished this a little bit. If I know you were filming, there's a silver dime in there, so the, the, the discoloration is on the inside. The silver is, what, oxidizing or something, so it, it coats the inside of the bell jar with uh, some sort of chemical. But that's a 1875 Seated Liberty Nickel, uh, a dime, <laughs> rather. Like, uh, I've chosen to decide Scrooge's number one dime is, is that. Here's a uh, figurine made by a, a friend in Italy of my uh, Klondike Scrooge. Here's an Italian toy that could be my um, my Yukon Scrooge. Could be Parks's too. So, I'm... oh, and here's the new German uh, figurine done by me and Stefan Brenner. Uh, that's a real nice. Uh, uh, the expensive toys in here and figurines, I don't, I'm not going to pay for. I mean, that's like three thousand dollar job there. I'll I'll trade somebody artwork for it. There's people who have got money, more money than I've got, and they'd like to have some artwork, and I'd like to have some toys. So, we swap. Uh, well, we're pointing over this way. Um, all around here and down the steps are the stuffed, the plush toy, whatever you call them. This case. Uh, this case here is, I think, all Uncle Scrooge. Of course, you're on the, sort of in the back of it, but they've got some stuff facing this way, too. Uh, it, it, just like all the cases in here, it's not like the stuff's on display. It's just shoveled in. So I can't even see... Uh, if, if I unloaded some of these cases, I'd probably be amazed at the things that I'd forgotten I had, because you can't even see everything in the case. It's just... It's like there, there's cars sitting on top of people in there. It's, it's terrible. Loss of life is tremendous. Um, but all different kinds of real nice Uncle Scrooges, really lousy Uncle Scrooges. It's, you know, take the bad with the good. Come around this way, uh, then you get the, the front view. Here's a little nicer. See, but I'm completely out of room. I can't get any more ducks into the cases. Now they're sitting on top of the cases collecting dust. And again, there's... Uh, Expensive ones, you know, collectible types and cheap ones. It's in a nice Italian toy, but the, the cheap ones are better than the expensive ones. And in a few minutes, we'll get over to the very best. Although this is a good one here. If you can squat down, I have to talk about this as an Uncle Scrooge fan. Uh, that one right there is the only real Uncle Scrooge toy ever made. Figurine. Because that was the only one made by the company that created Uncle Scrooge, which is Dell Comics. That was in 1960, 1959 was a premium that you could send off, uh, like you tear the title of the comic book off. You tear the top of the cover of your Uncle Scrooge comic off and send it in to prove that you bought it, and now you've destroyed it, uh, and they'd send you that toy. So that's what I think is the only really true, authentic Uncle Scrooge figurine ever made. And then the, that's an expensive one too. Anyway, um, and on this level are the Mickey's Christmas Carol Uncle Scrooges. So they're all fake, but I buy them anyway. And on the bottom level, like Daisy's on the bottom over there, there's DuckTales. So they're all fake also, but I get them also. Oh, probably noticed uh, anytime there's a mouse involved, I'll hang a little Uncle Scrooge on their faces. So you can't see to obliterate the mouse. Except this one. The mouse is sitting on Uncle Scrooge's lap. I guess in a minute he's going to stand up and the kid will fall on his face. But uh, this is all Christmas. There's been a lot of Christmas things, you know, in the... Go to Disney World or Disneyland, they're selling a lot of this uh, to tourists. And tourists are suckers for Christmas, so they... A lot of Christmas ducks. And again, it's just more... New ones, old ones, valuable ones, cheap ones. 
over here and over here. They're running out of room, room for them. And the DVD collection, like I say, this is also the entertainment center. Save the best for last, I guess. Over here, right in the center, so I can look at them all the time when I'm sitting here watching television, are the ones done in Italy. Uh, I think uh, there was a monthly magazine. Uh, each issue of the magazine in, uh, told the history of a Disney comic book character. Uh, and there was, all the information was written by comic book experts like Luca Boschi and Alberto Beccatini. Um, and the toys, unlike any of the other crap in here, these are the only toys designed by comic book artists. All this other stuff is designed by people at toy companies who don't know the, who the characters are. Like there's one over there, uh, they licensed the picture of uh, Flintheart Glomgold to this collectibles company, and since he had a beard, they thought he was Grandpa Duck. So they put him sitting in a rocking chair with an ear horn. So. But these are ones, I really admire these, especially that one, look at her. These are ones done by people who know what they're doing. So that's uh, and more of my DVD collection. And over here, my what's left of my Laserdisc collection, which was before DVDs. Well, I've got the BDs now also. BDs, and then before BDs were DVDs, and before DVDs were Laserdiscs, and before Laserdiscs were videotapes. They're all in various stages around the room here. I've still got videotapes that I, I made back in the mid-70s of movies that have not yet come out on DVD. Use that machine down there. 1975 RCA Select Division. It actually has wood, wood around it. That's when they made electronic equipment in those days. It had a wood cabinet, wood, real wood, off of trees. Alfred Hitchcock jumped down off the shelf. There. And the only other figurines in here that aren't uh, ducks, Disney ducks, or Toy Story figurines, Pixar figurines. There's uh, two from Toy Story, because I love Toy Story. And there's uh, my friend Doug over here. Hi, Doug. Say something. Yeah. So, should we uh, go down the steps? We can yep. take a look at the uh, the last case down there, because that's the case that has the most valuable old duck figurines and duck toys in it. Take a look out the window at uh, my view from up here on the nice, it's a beautiful day. It's very windy. Uh, of course, it's only March, so there's no leaves yet on the trees. Looks a little bit dry and dead, but uh, kind of a, imagine what that looks like in the summertime when it's all green and leafy. And you might have noticed the upside down here. That's because the that's uh, in Finland when I appeared at some conventions. They would hang that from the ceiling of the auditorium. And it has uh, like arrows pointing down, and I'm down somewhere below this signing autographs. But this is the case of, uh, like I was saying, all the really old and valuable things from the, some from the 1930s and 1940s. I'm really not interested in the stuff in the 30s. Not only is it, you know, you're getting into toys that are five, ten thousand dollars a piece, um, but that's uh, like the spoonbill. Donald. This is not the Donald I have any interest in. It's the Disney Donald. It's not the Carl Barks Donald. So, uh, but I just made it one of my other hobbies is to collect Donald Duck figurines. Bunch of uh, Three Caballero stuff in there. So these are all old tin wind-up toys and so on. There's Donald climbing up his rope. And, so I believe now we're going to walk, uh, this, this room is over the garage, so we're going to go through the corner of the garage and through the, uh, what we call a breezeway or a mud room, and into the, the main house. Yeah. Look over this way, don't look in back of you, because that's just a garage. Oh, this is a dog door. It's very clever, isn't it? So uh, in, when it's cold or hot outside, the dogs can push through this and get into the area that's more comfortable. So this is like the connector room between the, uh, the garage and the main house. This is, uh, or you can call it the gymnasium. Don't look, we're, we're doing some spring cleaning now. going to have a yard sale someplace, so <laughs> got to get rid of that stuff. If, if any of you want some, just come by and pick it up. Nice hat. 
bird cage, you got a bird. And also the dog beds are out here. Okay, now, so this is a log house, obviously, if you haven't noticed yet. I think it's called timber frame, actually.